Today I wanted to look at the coming recession and ask what might happen to jobs in the construction industry. I'll talk about why the next recession is coming, what happened to engineering jobs in the past, and I'll tell you what it was like working as an engineer through the great financial crisis. Finally, I'll also explain what helped me in the last crash and why I'm not necessarily worried by this next one. So I think it's pretty clear by now that we're heading into a recession or we already are in a recession given what's been happening with the virus and the recent price war on oil between Russia and Saudi Arabia. That's going to affect America. It's been over 10 years since the last one and up until now, if you look back and you'll see this in the chart in a minute, usually every 8 to 10 years there there's a recession so we're overdue. But this has been happening or building for some time because central banks have had interest rates at record lows for quite some time so people have built up enormous amounts of debt uh, across government, the corporate sector and households. They're all record highs even higher than the before the GFC or the Great Financial Crisis. But don't take my word for it. However, it seems like a lot of financial experts are suggesting similar things at the moment. So I wanted to go back in time and have a look at what the employment levels were for engineers and people in the construction industry in relation to the previous recessions. Some of this information was a bit hard to find for Australia and the UK. However, I did find some very good data for the US. So I've made a chart and I'll bring that up now. So what I've done here is I've got data going back to 1978 and it's the number of employees in the thousands in the construction industry in the US and it's by month. So I've also plotted in the recessions in these grey bands so you can see the relationship. So for example, starting in 1978, the number of employees was, was climbing. The recession hit in 1980 and it was followed by another one in 1981 unlike the later recessions which were just single events but you can see that from peak to trough you've lost maybe six to eight hundred thousand employees in the industry then from 1982 to 1990 was another boom time a lot more employees getting hired in construction and then the 1990 recession hit and this time you've lost probably 800 to a million employees in the US and it's taken a couple of years after the recession to bottom out but then there was another boom times probably starting from 1992 all the way to the year 2000 and you probably recall the dot-com crash in the stock market it is interesting to note that this recession wasn't as severe in terms of number of employees um, being put off. It seems to be mostly concentrated around the financial markets, although having said that, at this point, the central banks were really ramping up their liquidity um, and accommodative easing and lowering interest rates to prop up the economy. So from, say, 2003, the economy really started to heat up again. And then it plateaued a little bit, and then you got into the great financial crisis. Interestingly enough, the number of employees started to drop just beforehand, although you never can quite tell in the midst of it um, whether the official recession started later and the effects were being felt in the industry beforehand which is obviously the case here but that was a very big drop so you've lost you know maybe two million 
people in the construction industry in that time. And then starting from 2010, you've had another massive, massive boom. And we've almost got up to the peak, the previous peak that we had in 2007. But it's pretty clear to see that roughly every 10, 8 to 10 years, you have a recession. And the period from now to the next one, or the current one that's about to hit, has been quite a long time. So if we have a new recession in 2020 shown by this future grey bar, we would expect the number of employees in construction to pretty quickly start dropping off. Whether it's the magnitude of the year 2000 or hopefully not the magnitude of the great financial crisis, no one really knows at this stage. So on to the next chart which only goes back to 2006 but again I'm showing the recession in that grey band, the 2008 great financial crisis. Now the difference between this one is firstly it's Australian and secondly it shows the difference between total vacancies versus professional versus engineering vacancies and vacancies is employment vacancies. So you, you can see a zoomed in effect of what happens during a recession. So it's interesting to see here that in the start of the recession employment opportunities were still increasing but about halfway through they really started to drop off. The other interesting thing to see with this graph is the total employment opportunities versus the engineering opportunities. So you can, it's pretty clear to see that the effects of the economy are amplified when it comes to engineering roles. So they really swing with the economy a lot more than the rest of the employment opportunities for the rest of the economy. So I'll talk about my experience and what I've heard from others in the industry over the years. I've been a structural engineer for just under 20 years. Um, I was still studying during the 2000 crash, so I didn't go through that, but I did go right through the middle of the GFC or Great Financial Crisis in 2007 and 08. And I wasn't in Australia at the time, I was actually in the UK, in London. I'd always wanted to work in the UK, so once I'd graduated and I'd worked in Australia for a bit over three years, I decided to head over there. Around that time, and that would have been about 2006, the industry was pretty much red hot. There was a lot of construction work going on around the world, and the UK was no exception. So there was a lot of demand for engineers of all types at the time. At the time over there it was common for engineers to go on contract which means you get a bit more money and I'd been in contact with one recruitment agency and within about two weeks by the time I landed over there I'd already had eight interviews lined up and out of those I got two offers pretty much straight away. That amount of work continued for a couple of years but then in 2008 after the financial crisis, things started to slow pretty quickly. A lot of new projects uh, weren't coming on board. Some existing projects were even cancelled or put on hold. A lot of the contract roles, which up until that point were in high demand, pretty much disappeared overnight. I was lucky that I had a permanent position at that stage, so I stayed for another couple of years after that crisis. But a lot of the guys that I knew went back to Australia or South Africa or New Zealand. I also noticed on projects I was working with the architects, a lot of the junior guys decided to leave. And some of the senior guys 
took pay cuts, elected to take pay cuts to keep the firm running, to, but they were allowed to keep their jobs as well. So it was pretty intense at the time. Once the dust had settled, I'd kept my job, but the work was pretty quiet. There wasn't a lot going on in the industry. After a few years, I decided to come back to Australia, where I've been working since. I've seen times when there's been more demand for engineers or less demand for the engineers over the last eight to nine years. Recently, though, I would say that it's got to that stage that I remember what it was like back when I went to London in that it was really pretty much red hot again. There was a lot of work going around and a lot of demand for engineers. One thing I did notice from working between two countries is that while the UK did seem to get hit quite hard by the crash, Australia didn't nearly as much. So a positive thing to take out of that is if there is less opportunities in one country, there's definitely other countries where the financial conditions are a lot different and there might be other opportunities over there. So to sum all of that up in a couple of points, firstly, I'd say looking back at history, it is pretty clear that the construction industry is affected more than most by changes in the economy, especially after recessions. Secondly, while there might be less positions after a recession, times will get better again. In the long run, engineers will always be in demand. You just have to keep in mind that there will be short-term swings either way. And lastly, there is variations between regions and countries. So if you have the flexibility, working overseas at times might be beneficial for your career. So personally, I'm not too worried about this recession. We've been through a lot in the past and we'll get through this one as well. In a couple of years time, the industry will be ramping up again and there's going to be some really cool projects coming online and opportunities to work on them. And that's something that I'm looking forward to. Thanks for watching this structured parametrics video. Leave a like or subscribe if you found this useful and we'll see you in the next one.